Duel Review is brought to you by SpiderWolf.com. On today's Duel Review, it's Cowboy Bebop, the movie this time. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. Hey everybody, today is the 12th and we're taking a look at Cowboy Bebop the movie. That's right, and this came out in 2001 and was directed by Shinichiro Watanabe. Uh, the production companies are, let's see if I can remember this, Sunrise, Bones, and Bandai. Yes! Uh, so if you guys don't know about Cowboy Bebop, then you obviously don't know anything about anime. Um, basically the plot is you have the crew of, of um, you know, the Bebop, be the Bebop crew, and they're... Uh, they take on the job of finding a terrorist who has delivered this virus uh, 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 into the populace. And he's talking about this movie. This movie. This movie. It sounded like you were talking about yeah. the anime no, no, in general. No, in this in this movie, they're the, cowboys. The they're plot. mercenaries. Yeah, they're bounty, bounty hunters. hunters. Um, in this plot, they they're they're uh, tasked with finding the person who delivered this virus, and you know, just remaining as cool as they always are. That's kind of the main plot of all the all the uh, series. So go ahead and take it away. Well, I, I actually really like this. I love the series, and we did review the series, and yes. I can't speak of it highly enough. I love, you know, everything about it. And and I think that this carries that on. I do have kind of like a, a both side, like I love it a little bit more sometimes, and then a little bit less sometimes, because they take a lot of the humor out. We do have Edward, we do have Ayn, so they do have some humor there, but a lot of kind of the lightheartedness affair that, that kind of keeps Cowboy Bebop light, for the most part, the anime... Is not present here. It's pretty right. dark. Um, but you know, having said that, there's some kick-ass fight scenes. Yeah. Uh, Spike Spiegel, he is, you know, he's fluid like water. And, and if really you watch is. the, if you watch the uh, anime, he actually talks about that, you know, that kind of thing. But he's just cool as a cucumber. But he actually feels fear in this just a little bit. And he has such, such kick-ass moves. Like they really did a really great job of like panel to panel. You know, this is a, a, a drawn anime. Of capturing each move and I really enjoy the fight scenes and it is you know like turned up to 10 or even 11 most of the way uh, and there's a couple new characters uh, which fit right in I think yeah. but they're they're a little bit generic to me but uh, I love like half of the music and the other half she uh, Yoko Kano who does the music for Cowboy Bebop she just kind of going through a rockabilly phase it's so, like the first couple of, of songs are very like country I like I like that especially the opening song. I'm in love with that opening song. Oh yeah? yeah. I love it when it gets to like the carnival. Ask I love that kind of odd song, you know, yeah, kind of yeah. thing. And anyway, it is traditional, you know, cowboy bebop all the way. Uh, you get them. You get kind of like quintessential everything. I mean, this was after the the anime was canceled, and so you had a clamoring of fans. So this was kind of trying to placate them. But funny enough, the people that I talk to that like Cowboy Bebop and, and know of it, a lot of them haven't seen the movie. And I can't understand why, because it's a great one. It just, it was kind of under the radar. It was kind of like, oh, I keep clamoring. Let's just make one, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it was, it was good. It was solid. It, it does not reek of, you know, haste or uh, just give them what they want or whatever. It's really quite good. I thought Edward was hilarious. Yeah, I, I like Edward. They have a special place in my heart, though, Ayn and Edward. Ayn, I named my dog Einstein because of Ayn. And they're and, both corgis. Yeah, and then uh, uh, Edward, yeah, is very endearing, and she's just cute. And I love that she's not uh, sexualized, because a lot of little girls in anime, it's always kind of like, eh, that's a little creepy. Dude, because she is so whatever. out there. She's, she's hilarious. She's, everybody thinks she's a boy, because she's just, you know, flat-chested or whatever. She's very odd, and, and uh, anyway... Yeah, I, I love that. I love they get up, you know, they go as a duo, Ayn and Edward. So you have that. You have Faye going off on her own, and she obviously gets in trouble. I guess maybe that's a little bit cliche is that she's in over her head and she gets treated like the, you know, whatever. She's bound up and her top ripped and all that stuff. But Anime cliche. still, it, it's very quintessential, you know, Faye from Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. She does kind of save the day at some point. And then you get Jet and Spike and kind of their relationship. And actually, it's been a while since I saw the movie, and what I mostly remember is Jet and Spike. And I was actually thinking that, I can't remember Faye and, and Edward being in this so much. Maybe this is like a prequel kind of situation, but no, of course not. I just remember those so well uh, because I think they're very interesting. Because you learn more about the relationship than possibly an entire anime, really. Yeah. Um, you get a couple episodes of the anime, the very first couple, where it's just them. But then you kind of, right then, you know, snowballs, you never really get the taste of, I don't know, I guess you do, but 
anyway, I think this does a great job of cementing that relationship, and you yes. understand it completely. Yes. I like I like Jack kind of complaining that everyone's kind of going out and doing their thing, and they're not acting as a team. Yeah, and and again, it, it does everything that the series does because yep. Mike is complaining about, hey, haven't you heard of protein? You know, because they're always eating the cheap cup of noodle things, which are cool because it's like the pull the string and it heats the cup up. That is cool. I like that. I wish I had that. Anyway, and I love seeing the ship. You know, I just it reminds me of, of everything I love about the Cowboy Bebop. The ship lands in the water, and I it's love kind that of like scene. space, and then into the water and whatever. And the animation is done really well. Again, the music really heightens it. Um, you understand kind of the character and his conflict. I think it's very interesting. Uh, it has to do with dreams and kind of amnesia and yada yada. Yeah. And I don't want to spoil it. Um, but I, I kind of like that. That's a fun theme to think about. It's like, wow, could you really be in that situation where you think it's all a dream, you know, kind of thing? And anyway, uh, it's very, very interesting. Um I love the uh, little Nintendo Game Boy yeah. that the hacker has and the noise. Doo -doo -doo, you know, I love that. Yeah. And I even had that on the soundtrack. They they had the movie songs included in the Cowboy Bebop soundtrack, which I really highly recommend. Love it. Uh, anyway, I can't really praise this high enough. And I don't want to spoil what, what kind of... There's really not a whole lot of story. It's, well, it's no, more like character stuff. And yeah, like, this yeah. character bumps into this character. What happens? But there is... There, there's enough story where it makes sense to be a movie. Uh, it certainly didn't feel like an episode. It definitely felt like a movie. So there is yeah. enough story there, uh, but I think a lot just of just enough though. Yeah. Well, because yeah. I was I was thinking that this kind of does feel like a three part episode, but there's something bigger about it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I I think the story develop. I mean, the character development is is perfect here for the characters that we don't know much about, and for the characters that we do know stuff about because they do. They they are who they are. You know they're just wonderful. Everything that you love about Cowboy Bebop, you're gonna love in this movie. It's and perfect. again, the fighting scenes are awesome. It's so, so awesome. So if you if you did enjoy the the movie, there's nothing that is hugely you know there's no revelation or whatever that makes you understand any character majorly differently or there's no huge resolution that you're waiting like between uh, uh Spike and Vicious, although you already kind of got that in the anime, but. I'm just saying that there's nothing that's like, you have to watch this. Right. But if you enjoyed Cowboy Bebop, there's no reason not to watch it, because it's just another great experience. Yeah. And it reminds me how much I love anime from the past, and especially Cowboy Bebop. It's really, Cowboy Bebop for me is what ushered me into anime. Like, full bore, that's what I was really like, oh, crap, this could be really good. Yeah. Because before, I was like, oh. it was kind of like, yeah, that's interesting, but I never was like, oh, okay, everything, they, I gotta, you know, I wasn't really invested until Cowboy Bebop, so... Yeah, yeah, it's it's a wonderful. It, it's, I mean, I it, love the openings, like yeah, the the the, the opening sequence. Yeah, the, the robbery yes. kind of thing. Yeah, that's cool. And I like that. Spike with his um, headphones around his neck actually inspired one of my characters because I just I, that just stuck with me. It's just yeah, cool. I, I, he's just so oh, he's so cool. I like him because like he's there's a in but... the very opening scene. There's there's a there's a robbery, and he's just walking in. He's looking at stuff. He's like. You know, looking at stuff, and, and the guy's like yelling at him, but he's got his headphones on, so he can't hear him. And the guy's like yelling, and then he's like turns to him, he's like, "How much do you think this is?" You know, and then he's like, "Well." Yeah, yeah he uses it to distract yeah, you. Yeah, he's, so cool. he's just so he, he is so cool, and he just uses his environment. He doesn't, you know, think a lot ahead. He just kind of whatever and jets the opposite. Things. So that's fun. Anyway, all right, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please follow us on YouTube and subscribe. Watch our great playlist. Game Lab's been a lot of fun. Yes, they have. And please leave uh, comments. We love comments. And you can help support us by buying our wares at spiderwolf.com. That's right. T-shirts, a card game, art, print, short stories, and more. And if you're on Facebook, so are we. So find us and friend us. And if I'm online, I will chat with you all day. And we're also blogging. You can find me, fisk37.tumblr.com. I'm blogging as characters and releasing updates to the world I've created for 10 plus years. Take a look. If you like it, support me by sharing it. And mine is nicholasbach.tumblr.com, where I have short stories and poetry, so if you're interested, check that out. Okay. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I got that one. I'm happy. Next up, we take a look at the movie Doomsday. Scroll. Scroll. Button. Button. Scroll so smooth like the butter on the muffins. No, no, I want muffins. Oh, me too. How much are they? The, the, the muffins? Yeah, the cans. Muffins. Can of muffins? You know, like the Pillsbury Doughboy, they come in the cans and you pop them open. I have no idea what you're talking about. Are you serious? You mean like croissants? No, like like muff the buns. You know, like buttered buns, the muffins. The... I have no idea what you're talking about. They, they come in the, the, the tube and then you pop them open. The biscuits, the buns, the muffins. I've seen the croissants.
I don't eat Pillsbury. It's kind of beneath me. <laughs> Pillsbury. The doughboy is beneath you? Yes, right now. Mm. <laughs> Feels squidgy. Awkward. I just would rather have... I mean, you, you pay almost the same price for, like, a freshly baked muffin. Let's get a freshly baked muffin. Even, like, the Costco muffins are delicious. They're, like, you know, 12 for a dollar. I have a dollar. <laughs> I think they're actually, like, 12 for six ninety nine or something, but still. It's two dollars a muffin. No, it's 50 cents a muffin. <laughs> <laughs> On today's dual review, it's I Forgot. <laughs> that would be about the movie. I forgot. Okay. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. My hands were like stuck like this. I was like, I can't. <laughs> yeah, that was smooth. We don't need to do it again. See you. Oh. Oh. Yay. <laughs> I'm glad I got that one. I'm happy. I almost didn't. We were both kind of like leaning, we like, yeah, no. yeah. I really wanted to get it because I as love soon as you started, so As soon as you started leaning in, I was leaning in. No, you leaned in first. Nuh-uh. Uh-huh. Han-Han or uh, Guido? What? Han Solo or Guido, oh. who's that first? Han Solo? Get out of my house. You even have to ask that question. Han Solo first. Completely changes his character. Lean forward first. I'm not a huge, like, Star Wars, like, rage nerd with the little little thing, but that totally changes the character. Yeah. And besides, it means that he's a smart, you know, tactician. Yeah. Fire first. And he's not a puss. He didn't just sit there and take everything. Yeah, he's not a uh, uh, police officer. He doesn't have to wait till someone fires before he does. He's a smuggler. Hell, even police officers don't do that. The second they see I wonder if he's ever smuggled sex slaves. <laughs> that would change his character even more. That would change his character. And they're like, why do you think he smuggles? Like contraband stuff. Like sex slaves? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to think about that. It makes me sad. I don't want to think about that. I don't think he would. But, uh, Although he did have dealings with Jabba the Hutt. Jabba the Hutt sure loved his sex slaves. That's true. 